So we want something that, but if you had something designed differently from the very beginning, something that was decentralized, something that was uncensorable by design, then you've, you've come up with a different way to get the same kind of impact and scalability uh, without the corporations. <laughs> so we're making these people irrelevant in, in a way. Uh, and that itself is, is power. So giving people the tools that they need, the technologies for human cooperation, that is a really interesting problem that, that hopefully we can solve. And, and that's something that's never been done before. This is, this is like the new frontier of what we're trying to discover. So we had this big tech revolution with centralized corporations and government's trying to get on that too. But we, we have the, the options, the possibilities to do something even grander that, that will actually make it so that we need less, less oversight, less regulations, less power over us than, than, than in the past. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. Douglas Tuman chats with D. Martian, a liberty loving Monero enthusiast. The two reminisce about Monerotopia Miami, dream about a potential Monerotopia NYC, and brainstorm about how to build a Monero circular economy. Monero Talk starts now. What's going on? Oh, well, been been thinking about Monero and um, still recapping everything just from being at Monerotopia and thinking a lot about all the, the talks that were on there, the people that I met and what where this energy could go. What, what could what, how can we uh, turn these new connections, these this new knowledge that's been shared and and drive it into something that that's actionable and is going to keep moving us forward? When did you get into Monero, man? I, I I only just I think recently. I, no, you've been you've been around for a while, right? The the name sounds. Uh, I recognize the name. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've been around social media for. Well, here's the thing: I, was, uh, I I've been involved with Monero more or less, mostly as a user and just someone that was generally interested for about maybe three years now, um, and. I didn't really have any kind of identity or anything like that. I started using some different uh, platforms for chatting or Twitter and this and that, but it was all different names because I just, you know, it, it was just random things that I just was kind of like anonymous accounts. Um, and so finally I started getting, having conversations with people when we was moving from one platform to the next. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should start to have some kind of common identity <laughs> around this. Um, but really what, what drove me into it was just uh, figuring being into Bitcoin in general and cryptocurrencies and getting an idea of what it could, what it could do and having the experiences of trying to use Bitcoin privately and seeing Monero as an option and, and being like, Whoa, I just, I just send it. And, and I, when I, I looked at that, I'm like, it can't be. And started looking into how it works and how it's and I'm like, wow, people are using this. Um, and, and, and like even like dark markets and everything now, I'm like, whoa, so this is like, this is for real. Let me look and see if this is like actually, you know, not just another project. And the more I found out about it, the more it looked legit. It, all that covers all the bases. So I, as, as I got into that, I started realizing that it was more than just a tool to me. It started becoming something that, that could be a sol part of a solution for society. Um, something that opts us out of a system that, that is a, a not great for anybody <laughs> right now uh, the dystopia that we're living in where these corpo governments are controlling us in many facets that we're, we're, we're increasingly seeing tech creep into our lives and a lot of that's for the better and it helps us out in lots of ways but at the same time we're we're becoming reliant on these corporations tools that these government facets that are increasingly becoming uh tyrannical and messing with it and this is something that i saw maybe before, before there was any kind of signing of a political affiliation for any of these companies, they really hadn't laid down the law one way or another. But when I saw them, how much power and control they had, I started sharing it with people and talking about it with people saying, guys, this is, this is like, look at how they create the lens for how you experience life through your tech. 
if they have that much control, they, they, they're defining too much. And if they want to, they can wield that in, in drastic ways over your life. And as, as a result, I, I was just kind of, I, I was a little bit like the conspiracy theorist at the time, but I was living in Silicon Valley. I, I knew I, I wasn't just coming up with things out of my head. I, I knew what was going on, like from actual empirical you know, data. <laughs> and so, uh, seeing, seeing all of a sudden this massive swing now, all of a sudden when, when, and people started getting political, I'm like, yes, this is exactly what we started to, you know, what, what was seemed inevitable to me because they have that much power that's going to get used, but it's being used for the interests of their shareholders, not for us. Um, and the way th- the systems are designed, we need a way to just have, have some other tool that allows us to cooperate in this world that is full of tech, but, in an, but without having to rely on their, on the government money, on the, on the corporation's terms, on their platform, something that's not just not private, but also not centralized, something that is built on, on free open source software, um, something that, that can run on regular hardware, um, something that has a fair distribution model. So all, all these things are coming together. And it, it's, brought, it's attracted so much. You see, not just the people that are interested in the code and in the, the mathematics of it, you get... Uh, you know, we have, we have a lot of academic talent being drawn in Monero, but also just regular people that want to use a currency. Um, so that that to me is really exciting. Um, and I think that it's time to start plan- planning, making some moves. We need to c- craft the language to bring in more people um, to create systems that use this currency, um, have have more uh, make use of the technologies that people are coming up with and the CCS projects. Um it seems like this is an actual chance and I don't want it to be squandered. So that's why I kind of wanted to speak out a little bit or try to talk to people because we have a chance. I think this is a real chance for us to use Monero and other tools to, to escape dystopia. I love it, man. I love it. You're obviously, uh, <clears throat> you know, you're preaching to the choir here with me. So, uh, yeah. I, love, I love, I love what you're saying right now. I was thinking about that as I was driving home today, like, um, you know, what really fulfills me the most in life, like what my, my ideal version of myself would be, or, you know, what, what, what I think it is. And that's just, um, per fighting for Liberty. (laughs) That's, that's really what it is. Knowing, Knowing that, knowing that I fought for it and tried to improve kind of the Liberty index, uh, you know, among humanity. Um, and so, with Monero, I mean, there's really no more efficient, better way to do it than to just help the Monero project. You know, I, I like try to think of what else could be done. And it's just, you know, the the most distilled form of uh, fighting for liberty. It is. And it's it's different than the old fights for liberty. And just being it, people like to look at civil rights battles from the past and say, kind of almost mimic the aesthetics of it for a pro- modern day problem but not necessarily come up with a solution that's adapted for the problem at hand. And it seems like you're looking at Liberty from the value perspective and seeing how can we do that in our time, in our current situation. So what do you think needs to be done, man? Obviously, uh, you know, something that we've all been talking about a lot and I feel like more now than ever is creating a Monero circular economy. Uh, Obviously, you know, I always try to push that and do things. uh, But what do you think, like what really needs to be done is it is it that are we missing some piece of infrastructure in the system that's going to allow us to uh really create this monero circular economy or is it literally just people taking action and opting into it i think so what i think needs to be done is there are a few things that need to happen we need to set the stage for people to be ready for something like monero i think when a problem comes along Someone like a corporation, like a Disney does some so th- something in some state and there's some social issue at hand. People are talking about, well, oh, it's your side, you know, Republicans or the Democrats or, you know, whatever political uh, usual business as usual at hand. Really what people's reactions should be is say, why are the corporations whose interest is for their, their stockholders to make it making plays in our in the in, in the what controls our, our social policy? Just that fact alone should be something that's alarming. Just having people see how that, I mean, they saw it with 
the GoFundMe where they they thought, oh, we could just fund things. And they realized, well, you can't just fund things because they get shut down. Those things, people start to see that. And maybe if they start seeing how these corporations are really affecting them, that, that'll that help. Like, uh, for example, people tend to have workplaces that have values or meaning. And, but if it's a big corporation, a lot of the times these things really are superficial to an extent. People want to feel like they're doing working for a company that means good and does good and has good values. But really, that's something that these corporations do to the extent that they think that is good for its employee, uh, act, you know, getting employees to come in, join their company, retaining their company and uh, be productive. Um, but that's not true fulfillment. And get it, making people aware of of the, the liberty aspects really, I think, is is the first kind of foundation getting people to see hey these people don't really they're not really representing something of value and here's some here's something an alternative um where basically they don't need they don't need to be involved and additionally you don't need to think of them as a system that you need to just live in and accept it or work with it there's an option you have another option and therefore when you work with the government and and the government's money and you're working with the system that too is an option so you can start to lean yourself off of that. When you get annoyed at how the system's working, when you see things are just not right, you don't have to be participating in that 100%. And now you can start to have options. Well, what's that option? Well, that's where we need part B, which is clear language for the, the regular everyday person. I, I've been thinking about it. And I, one thing is, I think the two things that are maybe easiest is to say it's the most trusted, untraceable, cryptocurrency and the reason why is because there's always going to be some new way person that's going to say well ours is better the new private currency but at the same time most people don't want to be the the first users of something they, they want something that's trusted say this is yeah this is the most trusted one this is what people use this is you know it's been around it's it's, it's great and unlike bitcoin where you send things to the address but that doesn't happen because it doesn't get traced doesn't get tracked so they break you free that kind of language say, okay, this is great. Now I got something that's that's not owned by the not owned by the banks, not owned by the corporations, not owned by the government. I could just kind of it, I, it's something that people trust. It's something people use. I'm not going to get tracked. That kind of sets the foundation there too. <laughs> and then you need the tools that they can use. There's a lot about Monero that is uh, it's it's something that I think today's users could use quite well, but I think tomorrow's users need something more simple, something that takes the feature. So I think that's where people like today going out and getting people to use Monero um, and create these economies. That's, that's a great start because you start seeing where, well, how it's actually used in practice. Mm -hmm. And then in the, then what you could do is make tools that kind of automate that and abstract things away. Mm -hmm. And now, now it's, it's making it even easier because people just, everything makes sense to people. It's, it's using the features of Monero the way that works best for the users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if those things can combine, if those things can converge, then it's ready for a, a big wave, I think, of adoption. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, but really the biggest thing that is lacking in terms of making it usable is just having uh, liquidity. Uh, you know, yeah. so, you know I, at, at this point, right? So obviously there's things you could do. You can make it more seamless. You can make it feel more like Venmo. And when people say like Venmo, what, what what's really so great about Venmo is that it has this large network effect. That's really what people love about Venmo, is they could turn to anybody and be like, "Hey, I'll Venmo you." So like that's that's the bridge that needs to be crossed. Is it needs to be that anybody that receives Monero could essentially instantly turn around and seamlessly use that Monero. That's right. That's like in my mind. That's that's really what. And I think uh, Coin Cards is doing interesting things with that. Um, I think you know, you know, I see a day where something like that is built right into uh, Monero Wallet, Cake Wallet. I like promoting Monero Wallet, um, mm -hmm. Monero.com Wallet. Uh, like something being built into that, where you know, basically you can interface uh, with anybody. Uh, and essentially use Monero to send them to send them value, and you really it doesn't. From your perspective, it just feels like you're you know you're using mon your Monero, and you are, and the person on the other side is just getting value in in some fashion, right? So that um, I think we're 
I think we're getting close to that, right? I mean, what, what so what do you think needs to be built to make that happen? Like, uh, yeah, I think we're, I think we are closest bet right now that I know of is, well, there's two, two things that I think could work really well. Um, and one is to, to use the, uh, have good integration with the, the open alias, uh, features. I think that it, it, and this might be a little controversial because it, it's not necessarily as private, but I have a way for people to easily register uh, an open alias with some domain, which, you know, it makes it so that they lose some privacy there. But I think a lot of people would take that convenience factor because of the adoption. And but then also I would say that Molly.im, that that messenger, the the hardened signal fork, mm-hmm. they're looking to get that they're looking to get that wallet in there. And when looking at or just integrating with different wallets, they chose to have it integrated into their app specifically for that kind of reason. Uh, so that they, people that you have your phone number, okay, well, you're already chatting. You can also just send them an arrow and it's it's quick and easy there. And from there, they can move it out. They can send it to their, their Monero.com wallet, uh, whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's awesome. I'm, I'm very obviously, I'm a big fan of that, but I just don't know how much of a problem it currently solves, right? Like, we could be an iMessage and I could just easily send you, you know, send me Monero to this address. You know, it's like, is, um, like putting, putting payments, Monero payments into the messenger. Does that, you think it's going to get a lot of use? Like, there's going to be, yeah. Yeah, I think good. yeah. So so here's the thing is I I think kind of like how you're thinking mm-hmm. like that to me that's what you're that's logical that's 100 percent logical. Yeah. But I I I send Monero to people that are tech you know capable. They're you know people that they can they, they use regular applications mainstream apps. Mm-hmm. I send them something like a a Monero address, and to them it just like blows their mind. Like oh my gosh, like what is this this, this crazy thing? <laughs> it could just a copy and paste. It's yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah. No, but no, to I, them, it's just no. whoa. <laughs> Getting their ner- the blood pressure rises. Like it's it's yeah. you know like it's frustrating. Yeah, it's they get scared they're going to lose the money now. <laughs> no, I totally agree with you. That I guess what I'm saying though is because what, what's the name of the app? The uh, the fork Mol- uh, Molly Molly M O L L Y I am I mean, integrated into Signal. Right then, that that would be interesting, right? Because now you have this whole user base of all these people that are already using Signal. Uh, mm-hmm. And now there's this added feature where they can send value, uh, and they're doing it in a way where they don't really need to know, like you know, hold your own, whatever. Like the the wallet is built into Signal. Uh, that's interesting because then you're potentially very easily grabbing all those users. Same with Molly. I don't know. Are people going to be just start, like there have to be a desire to use Molly for reasons other than Monero, right? Which maybe uh, there are. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the main thing that they are is a, a hardened fork of of uh, Signal. It's mm-hmm. open source. It's yeah. it's something that it goes through Tor. It, it just kind of makes it a bit more, put some privacy steps in. So if, if you like Signal privacy, it might be a little bit extra for you. And, and you might like it because of that. But, I mean, to me, I think I would use it a lot because of the the, the Monero integration because it's like having your Venmo right there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when you start using something like, like when I went to the store today and I'm putting my, I have, I have a, a card, you know, it, that's kind of burdensome in itself. You got to plug it in and put the pin in and hopefully it scans, right. You take it out. It really, Monero really is just like a boop. It's and, and it's, it's going through, it becomes more convenient for the user as well. Mm-hmm. So having tools like at hand that you already use, I think that that helps as well. The fact that you're going there to use your chats. So, you're, it's really not opening another app, and that's another thing I kind of <laughs> learned from a uh, regular regular people that I've talked to is they they kind of loathe to download extra apps and like have another thing that they figure out and know about. Yeah. Having something integrated like that, I think, could be very well. I think they they are doing something. I'm not. I don't want to speak too much uh, without knowing their latest plans because I think there is they've, they've been working at figuring it out. But there's they do connect to the Signal servers, but then they also have um one that doesn't use signal servers because they want to break free of having to associate phone numbers with your, your chat account. Mm-hmm. So that that's another, that's another big advantage for if people that don't want to have a phone number linked to their, their chat. Mm-hmm. Um, but and for them, but maybe not, but, but yes, it does bring in the people uh, that have, have signal already, which is a, a huge base. And it might actually be the biggest uh, conversion that I've seen when everyone went from WhatsApp to signal. Uh, so people that have some, at least appreciation of, wanting to move to signal are, are going to be able to have that access. 
Mm -hmm. And to your point earlier, you know, uh, I also think it's just a communication issue, obviously like a marketing issue. Um, reminding people or enlightening people as to as to why you know liberty uh, is important uh a digital cash is vital to protecting our liberty as we transition into digital age i think that message is really hard to like sit and not and argue the other side of that and be like no we don't need digital cash like like what what is the the argument otherwise right so right. point where it's just in for the information just needs to get out of there out there where the re regular you know joe schmo is like yeah hell yeah i i, I don't want to live in a dystopia i want liberty. Uh -huh. Uh, so that's it. yeah, I think that's the sell. Really, is is right. in like if if you have a store and you got your Monero things, and really there should be things that that speak to liberty with it, because right. and remind you every time you pull it. Now suddenly, when you're pulling out those dollars, every dollar is a dollar. Wait, this is, now you're pulling out your pocket. You see, oh, this is government money. Oh, it's mm -hmm. so dirty. It's going inflating. It's disappearing. It's uh, losing value as I as I sit here looking at it. <laughs> well, well, this other there's this other option that represents liberty, and people. I mean, people really do have an appreciation for what the the values are and i think it's that's an easy sell what's the difficult part is is helping the, making it clear to them and then also reinforcing it in their minds uh the the ideas themselves because it is difficult this like technology is changing at a rapid pace there's everyone you that's trying to give you information is oftentimes have, has ulterior ulterior motives mm -hmm. and it's more complicated than your care to ever look into for most people. They don't want to deal with it. They just got to move on with their lives at some point. And so they're, they're, they're feeling a bit hopeless. So yeah. make boiling it down is, is, is something that could be helpful. We need Sherpas is what I'm concerned them Sherpas uh, into this realm on their journey. We need people that are going to help guide them. And by guiding them, we help ourselves because we, you know, you can't have an economy with one person uh, that's right about everything. You got to have people that'll work. And the more people you can involve, it kind of can have, it kind of can grow exponentially at some point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's definitely, I think the liberty, that's, that's got to be a piece of it. And I think that's something that is probably been most overlooked when it comes to Monero because people say, what is it? It's, they'll tell you that it's private. They'll tell you that it's, it can't be tracked. They'll tell you about the technology. But the really the connection is why why why, why yeah, does this matter why, why is that important? Uh, which obviously <laughs> right. that's what we tried to to you know uh, nail down at Monerotopia, right? That was literally the name of our talks. You know, it's like <laughs> why liberty. We started with why liberty matters. You know, so, mm -hmm. like let's go back to let's not, like re remember or realize why we're all you know into this or should be at least. Do you think so? Do you think most people in Monero that are passionate about Monero share obviously share that uh, that I that belief in you know uh, striving for uh, you know unadulterated liberty, like uh, you know liberty liberty for all in a, in, a, in a very deep way? Or do you think is is that the thing that we all agree on in Monero? You know, I think that actually is. I, I, I can say I was talking to and people at Monerotopia knew that I was talking to every trying to talk to as many people as I could. And the, people did have different ideas. No, it's not. It wasn't an echo chamber. There was not everybody saying the same things. It wasn't everybody from the same pat walk of life. What it was, I think that was the singular theme that got everybody there. It, it had that and a dis, a, basically a, a distaste, a bad taste in their mouths of, of the institutions that, that are in place affecting their lives. Just aware, aware of, they're aware of the world and aware of their part in it. And they wanted something more liberty for themselves and everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd say that, that was definitely, I, I didn't talk to anybody there. And there was different ideas about which tools might be the, the best to accomplish that. Um, and people seem to do the research more. <laughs> if, if someone was to bring up a, a, a project, they wouldn't just be generally unaware of it. A lot of times they'd say, oh, I've looked into this and here's all the reasons why I think this and this about it. But mm -hmm. I think that's why Monero is kind of boil it, when you boil it down, when people are actually trying to seek the truth, if they actually care about Liberty, it, it tends to lead them towards the same things because when something's not right, people tend to be turned off by that. Right. Right, if they actually hold those beliefs, right, then they're right. They're, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is, I think, what Bitcoiners are struggling with, right? Because I think there are, you know, there are uh, a large amount of them that really do have these beliefs. You know, uh, that's how they found. You know, the, the OG. That's how they found Bitcoin to begin with. Um, 
and then they're struggling with the the fact that you know bitcoin really could be better it could be like monero on the protocol you know fungible on the protocol level and it's it's i almost feel bad for them right it's like what do you, what do you do you know be like you, you you're you're in it for the right reasons um you had the the guts and the intuition to pick to get in it early uh and you did it for the right reasons but now there's this other protocol that's like really more aligned with the original vision but you have these big bags of of money that you made along the way what do you do you know and you're kind of old like it's kind of the ultimate test what's what's your take on that well i I'm, I'm not sure if this is revisionist history or not, but I've been Bitcoiners I've talked to have explained it to me as a, as being basically they've they that was part of the plan all along. <laughs> I, but in which case, I, I don't know that I could be as sympathetic because they're they're basically saying it was their dragon the tame, and they didn't and and you know it's it's up to them to do that. And what, what I mean by that is that they thought that not everybody's going to share these values, so if you get people to get into it for the money, they might be doing the right thing for the wrong reasons, but they're still in it and it still helps things succeed, but it's not a centralized project. Uh, well, it's, you know, mostly not centralized. Um, but it's to the extent that, yeah, they, they have these big conventions and now they're being surrounded by people that care more about the the number going up than they care about, or the, just, you know, the, the religious dogma of it, <laughs> then they, then they care about the, the, the same values that they brought forth. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that is tricky, but I think Monero can actually learn, uh, take a page out of their book in, in a way. And, and the, to the sense that it, it Monero has done great at keeping people that are and attracting people that, that share certain values, but we got to get that liquidity. You got to get that growth and not everybody can be a fighter for Liberty. Some people just need to, have something that's a good option that works for them and it and they get sucked along because of that mm-hmm. um and and if they gain they're they'll gain liberty too yeah but <laughs> but no, totally agree. Yeah. well i know I'm, t- I'm totally i think it's funny too that that current uh struggle in the monero community right it's like is it cool to talk about you know price and be excited about the price going up like I, I'm I'm t- I'm all I'm all for that, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. And also, you know, just talking about Monero in terms of being uh, a good investment, you know, it's like there's hesitation there, um, especially in terms of talking about in terms of like being digital gold. And uh, you know, I I don't think there's anything wrong with that analogy. Um, I think I think that's fine. And I think if 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 we think there's there if anything is capable of being digital gold, uh, if we're okay with, you know, Bitcoin trying to to be that in some way, then we should most certainly be okay with Monero trying to do it and see it as potentially you know a very good contender and potentially better and in, in, in argue you know you could argue in some ways. Right, and and uh, well, I'd I'd say that it's an important indicator as well of Monero's growth. I mean, sure, there's it's been around long enough that it's not like like oh, has anybody heard about this new hot Monero thing? Like, let's all try to pump and dump this one out of nowhere. It's it's really been it's been around. It's there's not much crazy news that you could say about it that no one said before. <laughs> it's, it's it's gotten beaten in all kinds of different ways, beaten down and and you know in, in the media and different people trying to do what they can to to regulate. But and in, in the end, it's like, well, you know, we can do work without it. And the price should be more of a reflection of the value being transmitted over the network. So if the price is going up, that's just a great sign that that people are using it to send more value over the network at a given point and that there's more adoption. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you have the transaction volume, but that's that's not the, that could also be uh, coupled with the the pricing of of it to get an, a more clear idea of the adoption of Monero. Um, and it, so like, and it also is something that should be almost inevitable in the sense that, you know, if you're buying potatoes with Monero, there's not going to be more Monero inflating at the same rate as fiat. It's going to be, you know, it might even see in practice, you know, negative deflation because of lost coins exceeding the amount mined. Um, but cause it's so stable, it's not, it's, it's you got that limited factor. Now as fiat goes up, doesn't matter how high it goes, the network is just going to have to adjust the price higher and higher to be able to transact potatoes over it or whatever people are buying. Right. 
So it's, it seems like, like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and if you're looking at investment, it's gotta be a better investment than, yeah, as long as, as long as it is the it being able to be adopted as the digital cash that it's meant to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause otherwise if it, it might go down and the reason why is because people stop using it. Cause it's, there's, you know, people aren't able to, or whatever reason. Right, it's not working. Yeah. Um, what 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 do you think of Michael Saylor, man? Uh, you know the way he talks about Bitcoin being uh, digital energy. You know it's uh, digital property, digital energy. Uh, you know, he talks about it in these absolutist terms. You know it's like it's it's light itself. Like it's it's a law of nature. You know. Whoa! Now, <laughs> now we now we have now we have Bitcoin and it's it's digital energy. Um, do you have any opinion? Do you hear him talk about? Have you he- heard him talking about it in these terms? Do you follow him at all? Um, I don't follow him that closely, but I, I've definitely tried to, some of my own thought processes have, have led in that kind of direction where I'm trying to figure out what's the value. It, what, people say, oh, is something overvalued? Is it undervalued? Well, what's the right value? Is there a way uh, to methodically or philosophically consider what should the value of something be? Mm-hmm. Now, I, I would say that that if you look at, at energy as, as something that is inherently tied to the cryptocurrencies, the proof of work, because you need to, to expend energy to uh, make it and secure the blockchain. Now, if you look at products in transportation, oftentimes there's a transportation cost. Um, now, maybe what you could look at it as is because that money, that energy that goes into the blockchain is, is discarded, burned away um, for the most part, sometimes it's recouped, but you know, it's essentially it, 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 it's spent, um, Basically, I, when I try to think of it as the economic transportation cost of the value. The econo- so there's an economic um, flow of things that are in, that are actually goods and, and services being transported, and now this is this is the, the cost of the currency. So it, it should have some relation to that. Say that this is it's worth burning this much to make this much economic activity flow. If that makes any sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're abstracting it. Uh, yeah. Into, into money, you're taking something that, yeah, that we've given value and abstracting into a digital form that represents. Yeah, currency. I'm not sure. I'm not. I haven't settled on anything. So what people are talking about, I think I don't know. People is. I'm um, tell me if I'm right or wrong. Is is that what he's kind of getting at? Trying to find a way to make make sense of it. <laughs> Uh yeah 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 basically is what is what he's trying to get you know uh, do uh you know he has he has a obviously he has a good knowledge of 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 physics right and he goes, has a good handle on it and he's trying to you know uh, use basically analogies to to you know describe what Bitcoin is um but you know obviously where I think he falls short is then just ignoring uh, the fact that Bitcoin for example, is infungible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like he has this ability to understand the system so well, yet is kind of overlooking uh, a critical aspect of it. So, but I was just right. curious, if you follow him and you and you and you listen to him. I know you had mentioned um, Elon Musk, right? You 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 brought oh, yeah. him a few times. Do you do you? Well, you work in that industry. You work. Yes, in- no, I do, I do, I do, and I actually get people compare me to him all the time, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm when people make comments about him, I'm like, I take it a little bit like personal because it's like, oh, they think I'm like him. <laughs> well, I I'm certainly a lot a lot less. I'm not nearly as good at making money as he is, but I like to think I like to think that I try to do my. Um, he he seems to not always do his homework before trying something he'll just kind of hear something and think something about it and just go forth and he has enough money to just kind of like bounce off the walls kind of and you know say okay oh, i learned something and then he'll, he'll learn from that so what i'm hoping is is that even though he's he i, I wouldn't say that I, I prefer his style and i wouldn't want him to be leading any anything relating pertaining to monero i think that it would be great if he could learn about monero to the extent that he could could want things to be he could he could learn to appreciate it i think that he does have the capacity for that and i think that he has the way that he operates i think he would be all about it mm-hmm. but i i, I can't see and i'm not i'm not sure how he'll reach that path yeah well that's so that's why i brought up sailor too to begin like sailor i th- i think he's a snake's oil salesman is basically the point i'm, I'm trying to get at and if you and i was curious if you listen to him then we could talk more about it and kind of 
you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not close like, with him. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why is he a snake oil salesman? <laughs> um, I just think he, the way he talks, he's just always selling Bitcoin. Um, obviously, you know, here I am always, I guess, quote unquote, selling Monero. But he just does it in a way where I feel like uh, he's he's like kind of saying it's a it's a law of nature and if and if you don't do it you're you're you know you're just gonna get steamrolled right it's like it's kind of like putting mm. a gun to everybody's head yeah uh, yeah I like that attitude like, oh, you're a fucking idiot if you don't do it and I'm the smartest man in the world and you know <laughs> and, uh, and I'm already <laughs> doing it and, like people are like okay sailor uh, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. Meanwhile, like I said, he's le- leaving out like critical like aspects of it, which are the flaws, you know, and not even like mentioning these things and completely overlooking them. Um, so that's that. And then with Elon, too, I feel like Elon, I don't think he's my, my feeling with him is um, I don't think he's misdirecting. You know, I don't think he's trying to pump Doge out of, out of some financial gain. Uh, I think I really do genuinely think he was just having fun with it. And he's having fun with the ideas. Uh, I have to believe he understands it on a deep level, though. Like, there's, there's just no way he wouldn't. Like, I mean, he, he, you know, was there. For, he started PayPal. He's been thinking about these concepts forever. And he's super intelligent. So he knows what, like, you know, the most, the, the best form of it could be and is. Uh, so I don't see how he then's like Doge and not arriving at Monero or, you know, is it is it he doesn't have enough time in the day that he didn't stumble upon it yet? It's just it that just I find that hard to believe. So yeah, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know what his agenda or thing is. Maybe it's just he saw it as a cool way to bring a lot of people into the space, like Doge. You know that that will get everybody's attention, and then with the you know, and then once they're in it. You know they'll 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 find their way to to whatever protocol is the best. But he's just like, let's just get everybody in it and we use Doge. I don't know. Yeah, I I think that he's certainly doing it for his own amusement to some extent. But I think that there's probably also some social. um, uh, Because before he he got like whacked with those like SEC things about like things he was tweeting, and then he realized, hey, I could say whatever I want about these cryptocurrency things. like when he, yeah, so he was he got in trouble with SEC about things tweeting pertaining to stock prices with Tesla, um, and so a while later he's like, well, I could say whatever I want about the the, the crypto, and really I think he's he he might think that see flaw, certain flaws in it in general, something with like Doge, and he just wants to show people or like like mess things up to it, like kind of troll troll the troll of the general population and the seeing uh, what what can happen. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually put a dodge. He put it. He tweeted once and put an actual dodge coin on the moon. And given that he has contracts to go to the moon and that he could just write, you know, and like you know, maybe a private key on something on on something there without getting in trouble. I I'm not entirely sure that he wouldn't put a dodge coin on the moon. <laughs> he might do it <laughs> just for just for kicks. <laughs> Yeah, I could totally see him doing. It. I mean, just for marketing, right? I mean, just like he 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 wants all the attention of the world, right? So he he definitely is driven by that. He loves that. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, gratuitous, and Monero. One of the things he said is that the thing we call money is just an information system for labor allocation. What actually matters is making goods and providing services. We should look at currencies from an information theory standpoint. Whichever has least error and latency will win. So which crypto do you think has the least error and uh, and lowest latency? Uh, well... <laughs> I I can't say that I the lowest latency. I think Solar is pretty good at that. It's gonna, it's usually going to be some proof of stake. Surely it's going to be something like one of those, right? And and uh, the error rate. Um, I don't know about error rate being much of a, a deal. I mean, that's 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 a weird thing to define in crypto. Where's where the errors well, I, are? I, so I, to speak. I think that's where fungibility comes in, right? Because like you know, if you're looking at the whole, you want you want something that's basically most fluid, right? It's a currency. You want it to be as mm-hmm. fluid 
as possible. I think it's a way of kind of another way of describing that, right? Something that can flow most efficiently without any hindrance, right? Where I could seamlessly send value from me to you or whoever I want. Um, and I think that's basically what he's saying. That's that's my interpretation of that. And then so like that's where I think fungibility comes in to play, right? Oh, it's certainly and every unit to equal every other unit, and there'll be you know uh, there'll be less friction in the system in terms of people zapping value to each other. Right. Well, if you look at the actual use cases, people started saying like, "Oh, is is Monero just for darknet?" But if you look at people that are using cryptocurrency as cash, because the people that actually like cryptocurrency for the values and want to use it as cash. Like you start seeing people are attracted more and more to using Monero because it's just, it, it works. It, it works. It does the job. Um, and, it, and I think that's kind of what filters it out in a lot of ways, showing people, people that actually understand it enough to know that this will work for me. And this is what I just prefer to use. Um, that's a start. That's a great start. Have you met uh, Elon? I haven't met him. Um, I would like to meet him. I, I would. I would love to have a conversation with him. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what it. What about? Probably. Probably some of the the crypto side of it. The things, but other things too. Yeah. I'm actually not sure why he's so intent on putting people on Mars, considering he's so transhumanist. And I think he understands. I mean, NASA understood this a long time ago that that humans aren't great at space travel, but our, our machines are or like modified humanoids uh, can can probably do space travel a lot better than anything that that we can do by trying to to me it's like trying to put a, a trying to put whales on the top of mount Ever- everest it, you know you can do it it's going to take a lot of take a lot of effort to do it but they're probably not the best way to to you know spread around you know get to the top of mount everest <laughs> so i'm i'm actually curious why why people on mars and to me i'm i think there's more other motives behind that Hmm. So, so, what, I, yeah. so what, what is your kind of you know take on civilization and where it should be headed with regards to you know i think uh we're reality. doing pretty there's a lot of untapped potential on earth i don't think we're overpopulated at all um i think that we can definitely utilize our resources a lot better um in a way that's that's fair and and uh makes makes sense we just really need our societies to work if we're going to travel outside of earth at least it's going to be there's it's we're basically on life support anytime we leave the planet there's nothing that we can really find that's uh, uh accessible for us to go to without completely terraforming it into something else and we're very far away from something like that i think that if we are going to be able to be around long enough to do something like that we got to be able to get things working at home <laughs> and, and make things right here. Um, and, and part of that, is I started doing some volunteer work, just uh, helping out with something called Femto star, which is, is not something that's cryptocurrency per se, but it's definitely privacy related. It's, it's a satellite system that they're, they're making um, and making some good progress with, they're going to make it so that you can connect to uh, the internet without being geolocated basically having it so that your ISP doesn't know where you are. Um, and it's not something that is easy to do. Like Starlink, if you've heard of that's Elon Starlink, mm-hmm. they have that set up. Uh, but this will be something that's designed in a different architecture just so that, and make it, it'll work with cryptocurrencies. So you could pay for your usage with cryptocurrencies or other means, but uh, it's going to be free and open source. Anybody can make it. Um, and it has a, 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 a scalable growth um, idea that will make it so that people can connect anywhere in the world without having their identity located. So no account, no identity, no uh, location, no GPS, no nothing like that. This is something you're working on, or this is? I just started helping out. Yeah, this is okay. not my not my baby. Uh, it's called FemtoStar. <laughs> it's FemtoStar.com, um, and you won't be able to find much about it there. But it's going to start out maybe like a CubeSat network, and then grow into some larger. Uh, platforms that have been uh, thought of as designed Mm -hmm. so uh, that could be a key part of it too because the privacy aspect people being able to talk is freely and use platforms and connect to the internet freely to associate with one another without the the oversight or the the government's corporation tracking us down that way that's a whole different aspect of privacy that we haven't really addressed yet there isn't really a way to get that first connection to the internet without having a way to be geolocated somehow 
these VPNs, there's VPNs and so forth, but still nothing that's ideal. Mm -hmm. So you think that's a solvable problem? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that, and it wasn't my idea, of course, but um, it was when I looked into it, it looked, I, mean, I was I was a little bit skeptical at first, but when I started asking questions and started looking into it, it started seeming like it really could be a solvable problem. Hmm. Um, solves, solves it really by making it so that people connect to satellite and then it's like a bent tube, which they call it, where it just goes up, goes down, processes the signal, sends it back down. The ground system will have the, like a token kind of system so that, that you can see, check that they're, they have an active session and route the traffic accordingly. But the ground station doesn't know where the person that's using the internet is and the satellite doesn't know. So they just get the signal and, and relay where it needs to go. It'll be completely encrypted all the way through. So there's really not an opportunity for anyone to know anything except the, the service that's being connected to the user will be able to get that secure connection. What 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 happens then, man? What do you th what do you think happens then if we you know we get a system like that up and running? We get Monero, Monero is becomes widely adopted. Uh, everybody's using digital cash. Uh, they're using other tools for kind of uh, really good encryption for communicating. What what do you think that does to to the world to society? I think it does great things. I think what it does in a lot of ways is it makes certain institutions irrelevant they can't control so they don't control and so people are able to work freely amongst themselves and you know, using systems that are distributed things that aren't centralized so something like plat twitter being a platform okay you've got that yes you gotta you gotta, you gotta ask yourself okay do we really want to control how a private platform what they do with their own private property that's not ideal but at the same time they have this outsized impact on society so we want something that, but if you had something designed differently from the very beginning, something that was decentralized, something that was uncensorable by design, then you you come up with a different way to get the same kind of impact and scalability uh, without the corporations. So we're making these people irrelevant in, in a way. Uh, and that itself is, is power. So giving people the tools that they need, the technologies for human cooperation, that is a really interesting problem that that hopefully we can solve, and and that's something that's never been done before. This is this is like the new frontier of what we're trying to discover. So we had this big tech revolution with centralized corporations, and government's trying to get on that too. But we we have the the options, the possibilities to do something even grander that that will actually make it so that we need less less oversight, less regulations, less power over us. Than, than, than past. Do you think there's any valid arguments on the other side as to as to why we might want to be cautious about, uh, you know, giving you oh, yeah. this technology? <laughs> oh yeah, because I mean, it's it's always going to be fear. It's you got to trust that people aren't going to join up somehow and use that technology to form a centralized entity of some sort and exert power unduly over people. And I think that's, that's not an unfounded concern. I think that just like the people that made the constitution in the United States, they try to be like, okay, here's all these checks and balances. They had tried everything they could to figure out how to stop tyranny and have a system that works. But tyranny always finds little cracks, little ways to get around different ways. It'll, it'll get more and more abstract and complex until it, it figures out how to worm its way into whatever it is. And, and so that's something that's going to have to be a concern for sure. By getting rid of one, by, by getting rid of this next level of tyranny, you, you got to be on the ever watchful of the next wave that could come out of it. What do you think? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, um, Tyr tyranny obviously always, always finds its way to, to date and 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 the, the scariest thing is we're, we're entering a uh, time where if tyranny finds its way at the right moment uh, when we're all opted into to technology that has the ability to perfectly surveil us then you know uh, you could you know, enter a dystopia, right? Because now you're just not getting out of the tier. There's no way out. We've always managed to break free. You know, society kind of, you know, tyrannies rise and fall. Uh, but obviously, this the scary thing is: do, does does the do we have the perfect storm where you know you have people wanting to take over, and then they do it, and they and they use technology to do it in a way where it can't be like reverted. And obviously, 
you know, I'm an optimist. Uh, you know, I, I think, I think Liberty will prevail. Uh, and I think we see it with things, you know, like the internet itself and, and, uh, you know, um, with, with cryptocurrencies, with Monero, um, you know, people are, are worried that maybe the internet could be taken over, but I think, you know, even just think the, the technologies you're bringing up, there's, you know, we, it always, Liberty always seems to be kind of one step ahead in figuring out how to maintain itself. So I think then ultimately the question comes, where does that lead? Um, I don't know. Do we have like a, a world where it's, you know, the, the tracked and surveilled and centralized versus the decentralized? Uh, you know, is, is that, is that, you know, is it, I think there'll certainly be a period of that. And then ultimately I see, uh, you know, decentralization winning, winning the day. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. I can see that too. Um, and, and to think of where, where, what's the logical conclusion? I think, yeah, I mean, it's gotta be this, this like for forever, you know, like these, these forces will be going back and forth. I think the thing that could really hurt us even more than a technology just a single technology is really education. Mm. It's really tough when you, when you see people like I, I was, I was um, close with this person who is, who is um, working at a very prestigious college and I, I got in some inside information and they were talking about how they're changing law school curriculum to have less. Um, the, 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 it took out certain types of the like, discussions and debates that they'd been doing for years and years that were meant to be thought provoking mm. and really just got people thinking and did had various discussions and they've been removed. Um, and they're removing it because in their opinion, the, the administration's opinion is that the students that they're coming into their, them at their first year and even later years are, have just haven't been given the critical thinking capabilities or even the openness towards critical thinking of, uh, of ideas that, that there was in the past. So seeing that kind of thing, and, and that's something that when she, when she told me about this person, was especially um, I was like, wow, you know, I, I, I could definitely see that being the case. Just the people that I've been in, interacting with around me in the world, uh, I could see that change. And that that's what to me is a bit more scary because what if you get people that they, they they're in dystopia and they're just following orders and they just, they're just kind of accept it. And that's, those are the people most vulnerable to being controlled because they're, what happens then is that they know that there's, they've got problems in life, but they're just told that it's not, it's not us. It's you guys are actually you group a and group B and the people, you guys are the ones hurting each other. And, and it's not, and you know, it's not us distracting and play, misplacing blame. People get upset. There'll be a lot of suffering and people won't have the tools to break free of it. Mm-hmm. I think that's really the, the, the root of it all. If, if someone is to take us over, that's, they're going to corrupt the minds of the youth to make it so that they can't think for themselves or learn to appreciate Liberty the way that, we fought so hard over generations and generations of, uh, and you know, like throughout societies and empires tumbled, toppled <laughs> before we got to this point. Yeah, it's it's uh, information war for sure. Yeah, but, but we live in a time where you're able to get more information out than ever. But then you're also able to manipulate and put up. Well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 uh, it's it's fun to be alive right now, huh? Right. Like we're, we're, these, these are exciting times for sure. Um, and I feel like we're right where you want to be, uh, in terms of being on the right side of history and, and in the mix. Um, one of the things I've been thinking about is Monerotopia trying to bring it to New York, actually. Uh, and I love make, it. making it more of, uh, a, just a general Liberty festival, obviously it's Monerotopia, focus on free speech money and and free speech in general um and i think there's a real desire out there there's you know an undercurrent there's a lot of people especially here in new york that are craving that you know Mm -hmm. new york York is uh under under attack in a lot of ways uh like you're talking even with education and it's just there's a lot of brainwashing going on out there and but i think there are also a lot of people that are are craving Liberty again in here here in New York. So I'm thinking of maybe doing Monerotopia here, which is kind of like the last place I think a lot of people want to want to come to for a Monero conference. But it's also a way to send a strong message. You know, you can't even you can't even get Monero. I don't. I mean, I'm sure I don't know if you know, but you can't even get Monero here in New York through a centralized exchange. You know, there's there's no means. It's not on Coinbase. It's not on Gemini. 
Uh, we don't have access to Kraken. I mean, that's just that just shows you how um, how backwards New York is right now and how restrictive they are. So I feel like why not fight the battle? Uh, you know, bring the battle to to the, the behind the city walls here. You know, why, why run away and create, you know, these little islands and say, let's all go hang out here. Why not just take it, take it right to where, where the, the main issue resides. I think that's, yeah, I, maybe it's not the first, like intuitive to everybody right away, but I think that's actually a great thing. One thing I, I'll say about New Yorkers, I, I love New Yorkers. <laughs> They've got great hearts. But their minds are sometimes discombobulated, <laughs> and, so, and so, and they've 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 they they they'll, they'll they but they've got the heart. They got the heart, and if if they if the, you show them something different, I don't, I, I think that there's definitely certain programming. But and, and one of the ways is to, is to not really take them on like head on sh- head strong. Like I think this thing that's really got me upset. Don't tell them. J- just change the subject to something that's more focused <laughs> and, and get them to, to think of it. that. That is a great way. And then I think those other issues start to fade into the background. Once they start seeing what understanding that, that what you're showing them is, is the real issue at hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, I was, I was uh, putting some stickers around Brooklyn and for Monero. So hopefully <laughs> that's uh helping spread the message there already but i think it's yeah it's and it's financial financial tech you know it's a big spot for that so i i, I know it's not yeah going off into your own island of, is a is a great idea but uh it's definitely a more um it's a forward leaning more of a like a uh, an a offensive posture to go into to new york city exactly exactly um so wait do you live in new york right now no yeah, well, I'm I'm moving to moving out of the city, but um, yeah, I'm, I was in uh, Williamsburg. Oh, dude, you, so, but you're here now in New York in this area or no? I'm I'm moving. I, w- I was. I'll be back. Oh, you were okay. Because I was yeah. saying we could have done this in person, man. We could. Yeah, I, I guess we should have. <laughs> we should have over. All right, uh, that would have been my deal. Um, yeah, that's that's why that's why I know the I know the New Yorker and uh, a little bit. I know, I know I'm a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Um, I actually did uh write down some. Oh yeah, what is Monero Mars? What what is Monero Mars? You ha- I saw you have that. Oh on. yeah, yeah. Well, it's everybody's everybody's looking at um uh Monero UK, Monero this place. I'm like Monero is like it's it could be anywhere. It could be on Mars. And like <laughs> I was thinking that me being in aerospace and like thinking about putting stuff out there. And like I, I, I realize I, Elon might be able to put something on, on the moon, uh, but I would like to put Monero on Mars. So, if I get an opportunity to do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that happen somehow. If I can get, if I can get some, um, sometimes you know you can do some etching or something like that, or, but it depends. <laughs> but uh, something I that know. I could provide. Do you remember Sorry. in Monero community there was somebody trying to do the? I think they were trying to do the Monero Moon mission. They wanted, uh, they were, they were funding. Uh, the building of of a rocket that would then send a 3D printer to the moon, and I forget I forget what the ultimate uh, goal was. Do you, have you heard of oh, that? I, I didn't hear of that. No, but <laughs> I, I really like the <laughs> idea of 3D printing on the moon. <laughs> Somebody was trying to do that, like push that initiative in Monero in like 2018 or something. It was funny. Um, huh. I think it was also the same guy that started the Church of Monero. Have you ever heard of the Church of Monero? No, no, I haven't heard of that. That was another another thing. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, that guy hasn't been around. He was one of my earlier Monero interviews. You go check it out. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty good to uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. I'll look. I'll check that out. The church of of uh, yeah. And that's something too about my uh, that that logo there. That's actually so Monero Mars. That's a that's an actual high def um, photos from NASA um, of the oh. moon on the bottom part and then Mars on the on the top part. Yeah, that's no, beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> And then what's uh, what's New Wave Liberty? I saw that in your profile. Was yes, that- yes. So that's that's something that it's it's kind of building off. Of, maybe we were thinking much of the same thing about you talking about like a, a bigger Liberty Festival. The more I started thinking about Monero, I started thinking about like, hey, we're talking about free speech, but hey, this has got to tie into all these different aspects of of uh, of our of our society right now. But look at who's we're talking about, not just how to transact money. We're looking at who runs the government, who, who controls how people cooperate as, as you know, human cooperation in general, how 
government power is, exists and is, is located in a way that works for the people and not just for, I guess, going after oil and other things. <laughs> um, so we've, we've gotten locked down in a way with the, the corporal governments that are able to buy the politicians that write the laws that do what's best for the corporate shareholders who, and then have the news outlets that tell us that everything's fine and, and dandy. Uh, and the, and the big tech that makes it so that people can't really have a neurosis on the, on the internet where they're not able to have regular conversations. They just kind of build swarms of, of emotion and, and drama, but not really, facilitating the, the ideas and pr- promulgation of, of, of ideas of liberty, things that people want to come up. Anytime someone wants to come up with an idea, they kind of scatterbrain it. They don't allow it to succeed, really. So I'm realizing, wow, we are just totally locked down. We're not living in an imperfect system. We're living in a system that needs that we need to escape from. We need another wave of liberty, similar to when we first were under tyranny in the U.S. from, from the, the British we need to reimagine the same way that that they imagined back then. We're thinking we're not trying to bring back what happened before. We need to think of it all new again. Say, how do we get back on track? How do we get liberty in our lifetime? And it's going to wind up in, in ways that that are very predictable if we can succeed. But it's going to take a lot of work. It's not just people developing. It's not just people making money off their bags. It's going to be people that are spreading uh, people that are the, the Sherpas, the ones teaching people, the ones building tools, the ones working to build economies, people that are the, the propagandists, the ones that, that people getting raising funds together, finding ways to raise funds like CCS and other other tools to make it so that, that people can uh, start cooperating using Monero to to get resources where they need to go to advance the project. Uh, getting there's there's so much and, and not just that, but everything beyond. So Monero could be an essential part of new wave liberty, but it, but it's time. It's beyond, it's, it's beyond just a tool or, or a single project at this point. And anytime we start talking about what really is a Monero, uh, we start finding out that it, we're talking about much bigger things. And that, that discussion shouldn't be limited to just Monero. I think other people should be involved in that. And I think if we're going to talk about this coin or that coin or this project or whatever, that's fine. And those are good conversations to have. And I, I think there's they'd be very spirited ones. But at the same time, people should be able to talk about the larger issues that we all agree on and, and be able to, to join together, on, at least on those parts. Because mm-hmm. if, if what happens is, is that we have these projects and we're all just divided along those lines, we're artificially breaking ourselves apart. So we have to have something that kind of outlines what we're all trying to achieve at, at the bigger, at the higher level mm-hmm. and allowing us to go beyond just Monero. <laughs> and, and once we can do that... Uh, we can amplify our efforts. You get those people from Bitcoin, they have those bags in Bitcoin, they don't need to leave Bitcoin. They could still advocate for the same causes, still talk about the same issues. Where so do you, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> where, where, where do you see Monero and Bitcoin uh, settling at in terms of each other, like their dynamic in the future? Oh, you know, um, I'm a fan of Monero's future because I, I like what Bitcoin's done and it has th- that liquidity there. It has the network effect, so to speak. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to be prov- solving its problems. I don't, there's a lot of people trying to make it work, but it just, it, it, it's not on a pathway there. And I don't, I'm not sure that its problems can be solved. I've been looking into some of the ses- stuff that ses- uh, set uh, for privacy has put out there and, try to, to see what other people have done when they've looked into it, because I think people want Bitcoin to work and I would love it if Bitcoin did, but it just seems like the roads lead to lead to Monero right now. So I think we need to kind of have ability for people to be one foot in one project, one in the other. We need to be on good terms so that people can kind of intermingle back and forth. And I saw that happen great at Guns and Bitcoin. Um, people were definitely fans of both Bitcoin and Monero and people certainly lean towards Bitcoin in many cases and Monero in other cases. Um, but at the same time, everyone got along great and they're all there for the same purpose. So seeing that I, I could see that at least being the next steps for their, for their convergence, kind of just a, a harmony of saying, Hey, we might have our, our own <laughs> inklings over which one's better. But for now we could recognize that both have, have their merits and we're, we're really heading in the same direction in terms of what we really care about. 
Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. How about you? What do you think? What do you think is happening for Bitcoin? Where you know what the dynamic will be between the two? I mean, I, yeah. Um, but I'm, obviously, Bitcoin has this huge network effect. It's kind of be, it's becoming the the uh, the medium through which fiat flows into crypto. You know, so I kind yeah. of see it as as the trunk. You know, that's that's bringing uh, fiat into crypto. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I, I see I see Monero being the 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 flower that blossoms from it. You know, the thing that you know that that we need most. Um, uh, so I, I I really do see Bitcoin just kind of as a bridge from fiat into crypto, and then ultimately it, it flows into into Monero, uh, and then you know Bitcoin will will exist. It will kind of be federated, control controlled by you know uh, really governments at the end of the day is really what i see happening you know lar- large large corporations governments because of the the attack surface that it has you know it's it's fundamentally transparent um so i i do think it will never be uh you know it, it's 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 going to be possible to control it in ways um and and uh and so that will exist. Um, I don't think that will go away. And then you'll have the more pure crypto Monero that will exist as well, which uh, people people will flock to. Sure. And, and that pathway, they, that, that they, bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where they ultimately end up, you know, does, does Monero then ultimately eat uh, Bitcoin? I don't know. You know, that's hard to say. But, you know, I think Bitcoin will, will, will really start to embrace its transparency. There'll be those, obviously, those in the community that want to make it a true crypto. Uh, but those people are going to move over to Monero. It's like, why, why would they try to fix this thing that really fundamentally can't be fixed? So, like, the ones that really believe in those ideas, like we're saying, are going to move over to Monero, and then uh, Bitcoin will, will will more so embrace its transparency. So you know, maybe this idea that that governments re- use use uh, Bitcoin and and the people and corporations and private business are using Monero. Uh, I, I see that potentially playing out. Sure, I mean, and anywhere that you get the circular economy with with Monero, um, and there's enough network effect in that circular economy then it, it doesn't need to be much flowing out into fiat or bitcoin or anything else mm-hmm. um so yeah I could, I could definitely see that happening and it's really unfortunate what's happening to bitcoin that way they for years they're trying to they saw it as people saw it as a they tried to dismiss it say it's a and they saw it as a threat and then totally it got big enough brand recognition and enough money it was worth enough for corporations to say well this looks like a nice thing for for us to wrap our arms around and make our make ours now and mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll start a committee about about uh you know regulatory bitcoin and uh we'll you know they're sl- slowly wrapping their tentacles around it that's that's what i i guess i i don't know if i see it more than other people having lived in silicon valley just being around it constantly but i just i've seen them wrapping their tentacles around it slowly for a while Mm-hmm. I just I, this is like this is like their playbook. They know exactly what they're doing. They're yeah. they got they're just doing it slowly enough so they don't they don't you know sh- shock people away that you know that that are you know like they, they want they want to creep in slowly and then they they'll take it make it their own. Right. So, and um, the problem is they're they're able to do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's it's because of its transparency that's that's what kind of gives the them the upper edge it's allowing them to uh influence it you know and uh and potentially right. start to start to uh control it but see even transparency if like if transparency has value like people say well transparency won't people if it actually okay so let's take that for an example well, okay. So then you could say corporation, you know, um, you know, Google, you can only accept, like, you got to report all your, uh, wallets that, that you have, that you accept money at, and you got to send us a, a, the, the V wallet key. The IRS could say that to them. Mm-hmm. And the IRS could see that their incoming money is if they really wanted to have that transparency without showing the whole world, all their suppliers and vendors, everything that comes in and out. Now I'm not adv- saying that that I have an advocate for that specifically, but I'm just saying if, if, transparency is to have value and that reason is because it has accountability then monero would also shine because it would allow you to get transparency to the ones that would hold people accountable whether it be a small audience or large audience or everybody 
Um, and, and it wouldn't always be everyone all the time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you could, you could, it has the feature of transparency, which you can opt into. Um, but it isn't fundamentally transparent where it then gives it an advantage over those who have, you know, the, the, the greatest ability to, to, uh, use the information that they can gain from viewing the ledger, you know? Um, yeah. that's the problem is it creates, an unfair uh, advantage, right? To those that can process, you know, the information the best, which are, you know, large governments with, with, you know, resources can then use that to their advantage to control. Um, yeah. And if you're a government, I would be scared if I own a business, I'd be scared to use cryptocurrency for that reason that like, I don't know who's going to get, I know that usually someone be able to get this data and do th stuff with it. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want, I want people to know that I want I want to be private. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, man, uh, I'm going to go eat some dinner. All I right. Wish, I wish we did this in person if I knew you were. Well, I don't know if you're in New York right now, but if you were, then we would, you know, do it in person. That, that would well, I'll message you when I get back in town. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you. Right, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Um, Sounds good. This is a good talk. Good stuff, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it was great meeting you at Monerotopia. I'm glad I'm glad you had a good time. Any 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 things you want to close out with? Uh, anything you want to let the community know, get the word out on? The word out on. Well, I think I think we covered some some good things. I just I I really hope that people that that are involved with Monero in any shape or form start or just see the larger picture of of the of the, the of what can be accomplished um, for for as part of a new wave of liberty, whether and as as well as creating the best form of digital cash. So I and and I think that when people work in looking at their own little sections for a little while, that they, you know that could be kind of take over your entire field of view. But there is even a higher field of view where that I think everyone needs to learn to appreciate each other in their own um, in their own expertise, so to speak. So I, I hope people recognize that the, they're doing great things together, and we have a, a real chance to 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 do great things as long as we participate in any way that we can. Thank awesome, you for man. joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.